Hi there. My name is Robert Johansson, or as we say in Sweden, Robert. And that's another language than English. Sometimes people ask me, you know, Robert, what are you doing in your line of work? Well, I'm doing something that's called RBIM. It's a, just a method. And people go, oh, okay, cool. So what do you do with that? Well, basically I'm trying to help people make their lives function better. I'm going, like, oh, that seems like nice, you know. What do you mean by that? Well, sometimes I work with sports, uh, athletes, professional athletes in whatever sports they have. And I like to work with athletes. There are several reasons for that. One is they're really, really ambitious. And I mean, they're doing a lot of things to make, you know, the performance better to improve the results, uh, make the, you know, dreams come true stuff, right? And people go like, wow, that's similar. Yeah, I mean, in triathlon, for example, you have to, you know, make 20, 25 hours a week of running, swimming, and bicycling during the off season, which is, by the way, a long, it's a many, many months of, you know, training. And it's that kind of sport, requires pretty much a, a single determination for about 8-10 years to get to uh, the performance level you want to have because you're building you know slowly over time the performance you want to have in that kind of sport in other sports it's more about the technique or skill level of the kind of uh, if you talk golf uh, golfing uh, requires a lot of sub skills you have putting, you have chipping, you have pitching, you have half shots, you have quarter shots and you have full swings and stuff like that. So you have a lot of sub skills in, in one sport and you have to master all of them to get real, really good results and all this stuff. So sometimes people ask me, so what do you do? Well, I'm trying to teach people the way to access uh, the desired experience and it's about context because people interact and create context and that was the brain does. The brain is organizing context. And you've been doing that for your whole life. And most of the time what happens is that people assume that the context or their unconscious mind runs their lives. Because when they're faced with the context, the brain goes, oh, this is the context I want to have this kind of action or behavior, so they rise. So let me give you a practical example. For example, if you wake up in the morning, go and get to work, right? You put on uh, your suit, and you go like the brain goes oh i'm bringing on the suit now so i'm a billion dollar man i'm going to go around and rock the house right you're the million dollar man right cool or billion dollars it depends on what kind of line of work you do and the brain and go like and you eat your breakfast and so it's, it's great you go to work and what then you come home right and most people they can't you know do anything different than you know still at work, you know, taking the work all at home. Now. But uh, if you do these things differently, you know, you, you skip that and you put on the love machine. So you're the million dollar or billion dollar man at workplace and you have a suit now, you come up, take it off and then you're the love machine. And you look at your wife or spouse or something like that, right? And they go like, well, what's going on? Well, nothing. I'm just a love machine today. And they go, no, not again. And after 10 or 15 years of marriage, uh, they, can, they will come around to that kind of, you know, approach and behavior. Hopefully. You see, most people can't decide what kind of experience they want to have when they're going to interact with people. Strangely. True, yes. So what's going on then? Why can't people, you know, choose that? Well, we have this kind of idea. Let me illustrate that. Uh, I did a workshop a couple of years back. I had a student there. Cool. And the student said something that was, uh, for me, really fascinating and interesting for several reasons. He said, you know, you're doing what you're writing on your blog. And I said, why shouldn't I do what I'm, you know, writing about on the blog? Because people, adapt to circumstances. This is the great things about the human brains. We adapt to circumstances. And we do that so fast, so we don't think about it much. Uh, either when it's happening or after. 
But his students said, you know, you're doing the same thing you're, you know, writing about on the, you know, blog. And I said, why should I do something else? It got me thinking, though. Hmm? Cool. I had a student who asked me a great question. That's not so common, but maybe. And I understood that most people, when they go to a workshop, actually expect whatever they've write, uh, been reading in the brochure or the pamphlet or about the class, the workshop and all that, it's not what's going to be in the class or in the workshop. And if you ask me, if you go to an NLP workshop and the people tell you, you know, you're going to follow your bliss, you kind of expect that's what's going to happen on the, on the workshop. And if that's not going to happen in the workshop, you know, that's false advertising. And everybody does that because people, you know, adapt to circumstances. They just, you know, sleek in the, like, a, you know, around the corner or angling. They like, oh yeah, baby, I got that. Um, so that's going on a lot in the, you know, workshops and all that. Because people don't teach you the same thing that they write about in the brochure or pamphlet or something like that, or in the blog or whatever, in the works, or in the website, you know, stuff like that. So what's going on then, man? What's going on? Well, what I'm doing in my line of work is trying to, to do my best to analyze complex behaviors. Thinking <clears throat> that leads to uh, beliefs and values about life or the performance and stuff like that. And I'm trying to make people build or uh, whatever you can call it, a new way of functioning in life so they can be, you know, it's funny. Uh, most people who live in their, in their life, you know, want to fix a problem or two because their life sucks, basically. Uh, when people get success, uh, either in the main media or stuff like that, like, like in the, you know, show business, they get a problem with paparazzi and stuff like that. They have to, you know, guard a family from photographers or people who want to kidnap their kids and stuff like that, it's, it's a whole lot. So, you know, often they also decide what the meaning of life is or seek happiness. So, so they got the different, you know, outcome, you know, they want to, you know, reach in life, stuff like that. You know? I understand that, I understand that. Uh, but most people who have what we call trouble in life, uh, more or less want to try to fix things instead of, you know, it's not fucking work. So they don't put on a million dollar man in the morning. They don't go come home and, hey baby, it's a love me, love machine today. And people go like, you can't do that because, you know, my life has been like this and I, it sucks a lot and I can't, you know, and the, the kids are screaming and I just hate them. Well, maybe you do. You see, the responses people have to whatever they're going on in life, it's been learned responses. It creates a causality. It creates a kind of difference. So they adapt to that kind of circumstances. Much like, you know, you go to a workshop and you read the pamphlet, you read the, you know, write nice brochure and you go to the workshop and it's not the same. You know? And your brain goes, well, it's not the same. Well, I do adapt because that's what people do. And if you've been doing that your whole life, and you come to a work of like uh, what I'm doing, it's the same thing. And people's brain goes, it's the same thing. And I go, yes, I know. But you sh it should be different. No, it shouldn't. Whatever people are doing in, in the field, I don't agree with them because they're not teaching you the same thing they're writing about or talking about, whatever you call it. I do. And people have a lot of trouble with that, by the way. Really strange phenomena out there. It's a whole different reality and stuff. Mm. I think about this a lot. Um, and, and, and sometimes people ask me, when you're working with sports people, what do you want? Uh, most of the people have no clue uh, what's, uh, what they do to get uh, performance results, right? Or, uh, Triathlon, for example, the girl I was coaching, um, she had this uh, belief that she needed to be tired while she was running and, you know, swimming and bicycling because she was doing that for Olympic distance. There's two hours, give or take a few minutes here and there. So she was, you know, swimming a long time, she was bicycling and then she was running one 
you know, 10 kilometers. That's a lot of work. And she had this idea she had to be timed during the race because then she knew that she had done the, her best. So I coached her, I made two sessions. She went to Turkey to make a, a, a European event there. And she wasn't tired during the race. She was disappointed by that, by the way. She was not tired. She did, however, make a personal best on that time, on that course, by eight minutes. Or something like that, eight, nine, ten minutes, something like that. Two sessions. Cool. Why wasn't she, she tired then? And why was she disappointed by that? Well, obviously she was disappointed because she had the belief that she needed to be tired during the race to get everything out of the system. Right? She didn't know this because she, she was never thought about that by her coaches, you know, the best in the field, stuff like that in the swimming area and, you know, running and, you know, bicycling, you know, all those oh, great guys and girls there. I'm sure they're good in whatever they do. But the thing happened, she took a bicycle, went to the hotel, and suddenly she was hit by a truck. In her, she, that was her word. She could hardly walk up the stairs with a bicycle to the hotel room. She was totally dead tired, totally exhausted. Why? Well, the reason is simple. She did her one hour and 50, 50 minutes race in perfect experience for her. She had the, she get everything out of her system in that train. She wasn't tired because she was running the same experience in the soul, you know, you know, so it's almost like a loud machine. It's, some say it's even better than sex. I don't agree on that, but hey, let's keep it civil, right? Okay, don't, don't push it. So she was really, really, really tired after. She asked me about that later when she came back to Sweden and said, no, no, why, why, what's going on? And I explained to her why she wasn't tired on during the race because she was working at peak efficiency in her <coughs> technique level, in her performance level, and during that she would not get time. But she would get everything out of her system, which were really hard to get, you know, top. And when she shifted context when the race was over for her, her body had time to, you know, adjust and to, you know, feel and how tired, and she was totally exhausted. She adapted to this obviously and, and was able to increase her uh, performance level during the next few years to, to even get into European Championship uh, races. And she was almost into the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games. Uh, and she said she, she did beat those, you know, who went there. And she said, well, but that, that's how it is in sports, you know. It's, Especially in triathlon, it's not a big sport like football or uh, you know track and field and stuff like that. But I want to give you this message that when people assume this is an unconscious mind running, love, it's, it's it's not. It's more like the context you have learned to interact with and create responsibility. And when you're interacting with its context, uh, the brain goes, "Oh, how should I behave?" And then it produces the action. And what I'm trying to teach you and other people is to basically take control of that and create a new kind of experience. What do you want to have when you wake up? Do you want to be dead tired? Sometimes people are like, I'm dead tired anymore. Oh, I don't know. I had to wake up and go. I was asleep. And why not wake up alert and energized directly? And people go, can you do that? I'm one of them. Whenever, I, whenever I'm doing a life, when I wake up, I'm just alert. Energized and all this stuff. I had this guy in my class, a student. He was, you know, uh, almost killing his kids in the morning for three hours because he was so pissed off when he wake up. Oh, he was like, you know, God, this punishing me, stuff like that, you know. Anyway, he was able to, after some good advice from me, and he's taking my workshop, by the way, that helps also, to go from, you know, three hours dead tired, pissing off everybody and trying to kill his kids, to one guy that, you know, boom, I'm sitting here in the morning, stuff like that, right? It was, yeah, yeah, man. Um, 
And he had to travel when he got home from work that he had to, you know, drink a few beers. And I was asking him about that. Well, that seems really strange for me. And he said, well, I have to relax, you know. And I said, you know, you can, you know, just shift context and relax in that way. And he goes, what do you mean by that? You know, you take my class, you know, apply the material. Follow the instructions, as I like to say. And he was, oh, I can do that, yeah. So then he started to do that. And I just, you know, sometimes people are overachievers. That they don't listen to advice and stuff like that because they're so determined to, you know, do everything at once. So they need to learn, you know, you know I mean, how things work better because, so they can get the better performance at hand. Most people don't do that. Did you know that when people talk about performance and results and stuff like that, something uh, most people can't do because they get you in their own way. People say that, don't get in your own way. And I go like, cool, concept. Don't get in my own way, cool. Do I have a clone or you know, a copy of myself out there? No, you don't. So people say that, but what do they mean by it? What does that you know, do in your hand and in your body? They can't answer you now. It's a cool concept. Don't get in your own way, man. Duck and sweet, duck and sweet. Oh yeah, baby, duck and sweet. So that's why you don't get in your way. No, it's not. It's about finding out what works for you so you can get the results you want to have instead of modifying stuff. I'll give you an example of that so you understand what I'm talking about. Let's say you want to have a result in your sport and you're trying to do things but it doesn't happen immediately so you start uh, trying to do something else now. And that seems like a nice concept. Whatever it can teach you also is that it's not to fulfill or make the one thing happen. So, you, you know, you're focusing your brain, but you know, I was trying to do this and that, I'm not trying this and that. And if you do that, it will shift you out of the, you know, whatever you want to do and create the trouble you're trying to avoid or the result you want to have, depending on what kind of language you want to run with. So you get to the behavior that you, you know, basically limits you. I'll tell you a story about that. I met a girl many years ago, about 15 years ago. She was sitting down there at a the workshop I was attending at the time. And she was like, you know, 19, 20 years old, 22, I don't know. And she made this comment, you know, every guy I'm with is, you know, is unfaithful. And I was like, she was like, hot, 20, 22. Why should any guy, you know, want to be unfaithful? No, she, was, she was not my type, but hey, she was a great girl. So I started to ask her a few questions about that. Uh, <clears throat> and what I had happened was that one guy, the first guy, or something like that, was unfaithful. She fucked, he fucked some other girl. He was not doing the love machine, by the way. Uh, he maybe did a million dollars, you know. But he's not doing the love machine. So the next guy she was with, uh, she wanted to make sure that wouldn't happen again, that, he, that this guy would be unfaithful to her. Because, so she started to, you know, really pour it on, to really cling him, you know, really get him, you know. And he was, you know, the guy would probably, you know, I don't want just that, uh, you know, it's too much. And I asked her about this, the guy had been saying, you know, it's too much. And he was like, yeah, she said, yeah, but I really want to make sure she, they were not that way. So the only response the guys had was to be unfaithful with her. Why? Because her behavior started to drive them in that direction because she was not listening to, her, to the feedback she got from them. Because she got stuck in the illusion of uh, what she wanted. But her behavior actually made that result happen, that she wanted to avoid by any cost. And sometimes, you know, people don't understand how, you know, people understand or react to the all. And that's about communication, obviously. And you have to communicate in a way. I mean, uh, I got some beef with LLP, for example. LLP is a neurolinguistic program for those who don't know. Doesn't know. And in LLP, they say, if you do what, if you, if you teach you to do things and it doesn't work, you do something else. And I go like, if you teach someone to do something, it should work, you know. And that's adapted. They want you to adapt so, so they can sell you the stuff they do that doesn't work. So then you can adapt to that and make something that works. 
that they didn't teach you. So you actually pay for something that they didn't teach you to do. Mm -hmm. Kind of strange thing. This is, by the way, by the farmers of NLP, by the way. Come directly from the horse's mouth, stuff, stuff like that. You know. And they probably didn't do the love machine either. And you have to understand that whatever people are doing and you yourself are, doing, are adapting to circumstances all the time. Since this is happening really, really fast, and a few times, the brain, brain builds a generalization and a context with that, so it starts to do that and expect that in the future. So even though unrelated events, the brain goes like, oh, this has to be a pattern here. No, the brain is a pattern machine, but, but hey. So it's making patterns of things that don't happen. That's what, if you see the guy with the, you know, a movie about 12 years ago, with the guy who was a mathematician, he got schizo, schizo, you know, seeing things that wasn't there and all that stuff. And he was seeing, you know, messages in newspapers and movies and stuff like that. And, oh, they're they after me and all that stuff. And that happened because the brain is that. And you, you have to be uh, pretty much directive in how to access and go in with your own desire and experience and dreams and stuff like that. So you can create your own experience. That's what I'm thinking about a lot. To make it easier for people to you know understand how to do that and access that and all that stuff. I had a conversation with my uh, guy I coach in golf and I told him that he had this thing going on that he wanted to you know do things that actually made things worse for him. And it took a long time explaining everything around that and all that time. And then I told him what to do and all that stuff. So he went out and showed 200 par and he was playing, playing really, really well. And it's, it's easy to get in your own way because you're believing stuff and doing things that actually is the opposite of the result you want. And that's the duality of humanity. That's how the brain works, by the way, in creating consciousness. We create this, you know, internal references to different contexts. And while we are, you know, thinking about them, about them, that's one thing. When we're engaging into the kind of experience we want to have, well, it's either a machine, getting home, and, or waking up in the morning having a suit on, and you go like, oh, I'm a million dollar man, eh? I'm going to run the place now. That's kind of cool experience to huh? have. Well, as I say in RBIM, legendary awesomeness. Having that kind of, you know, legendary stuff going on. Having that kind of experience run. And then some days things doesn't work out, you have a different experience, cool. You don't need to adapt to that, you just have to have that kind of, you know, whatever. It's, uh, sometimes you wake up, oh my god. So you can have that for a moment and then you go, like, well. No, I don't want to have it. I want to have that and stuff. And you know how to access that, keep track of that, and all of that, and stuff like that. Fun stuff. Um, there's a lot to think about. There's a lot of things to do. But I'm, I'm, I just wanted to make you, sure you understand that people adapt to circumstances. And the thing here is, this creates assumptions. So then you, you know, enter a workshop and that since you've been reading the brochure, you expect something else and you've been reading about that because that's what you've been doing your life. You went to a class, a class, a class, a class. And then you come to my class and I say, this is what's going to happen. Do this. And people do, well, it works. Yes, I know it works. But how do you know it's going to work? Because I know one variable or one thing or one absolute amount of that makes NLP works every goddamn time. Every time. John Green and Richard Bannon and the other guys, Robert Dales, you know, David Gordon, you did the lows here. And all the great names out there don't know. I do. They don't call me, by the way, to ask me to teach them that. Yet. But they will. One day. I'll make a move about me or writing a book about me, I don't know. But I know that. I can explain it and teach it. And I mean, explain and teach it in the classes, so it's out there. One in 100% every time, if you do that. 
because that using the brain's way of you know adapting and not adapting to whatever's going on in the world called context. Whenever you interact with the environment, you create an internal reference, and you can have that by chance or by intention. Something to ponder about in the coming days, and weeks, and months, and hey, maybe the rest of your life. I don't know. Well, maybe you make a decision to do something different, smarter, choice. Either doing the love machine, coming home to your wife or guy and go like, oh yeah, maybe. Or it's putting on a suit and go like, whew, today I'm going to rock the house. I don't know. It's up to you, girls and guys out there. I'm signing out now. The love machine is going home.